Tents are a popular shelter option for backpacking trips, but there are so many to choose from. How do you decide what's right for you? Hi folks, it's Switchback. This video is about what to look for when shopping for a backpacking tent. I'm going to try to cover as many possibilities as I can, but what's important to one person is not necessarily what's important to someone else. And if I missed something, leave it in the comments below. I'll put links to my tents and to other popular tents down in the description below. I'll touch on four season tents slash mountaineering tents, but I'm not really gonna go into it in depth. I'm also not gonna cover bivvies, tarps, hammocks, or cowboy camping, which leaves you with not much to buy. But there are other possibilities other than tents if tents are not for you, but this video is for tents being for you. Let's start by touching on some terminology and common parts of a tent. I will go over most of these more in depth later in the video. Doors, because of course you need a way to get in and out of your tent. A vestibule is almost like a little mud room for your tent, an extra space for your shoes, pack, etc. Vents can improve breathability and reduce condensation that can collect along the inside of your tent overnight. Guy lines, which are any kind of lineage that's holding up your tent or giving it more airflow. That also includes what I have on the corners of my X mid here. And you can see that I am a big fan of adding it to the corners of my tent because a lot of times it does come in extra handy when you can't just stake anywhere. For example, when I was staking out this, there was a big old root that was really hard to work around. So thankfully I had that extra length. And if you would like to see how to change that out on your X mid, you can see that up here. Some tents have grommets for securing poles to your tent, whether you have tent specific poles or trekking poles. Freestanding tents versus not freestanding. Um, and ones that require trekking poles are usually not gonna be freestanding. There's also semi freestanding which stands up for the most part with poles that it comes with, but you do need to stake it out in order to maximize the space. Most tents, including these, are gonna be three season tents versus a four season tent, which is intended for mountaineering, heavy snow loads, high winds. A double walled tent will have a standalone, although not necessarily always freestanding, mesh inner that attaches to the tent poles and a separate rain fly that goes over it. A single walled tent has just one layer, so the whole tent is one piece. There may be a partial mesh inner, but it will all be attached. Tent stakes or tent pegs are used to secure your tent and or, or guy lines to the ground. Shock cord is the stuff that's inside of poles to keep them all bungeed together. A bathtub floor is how it goes up a little bit from the ground rather than having the mesh go all the way to the ground. This offers some protection against the elements and certainly from rain and moisture. Some common considerations when you're choosing a tent. First, budget. If this is your very first tent, figure out what you like and then blow your money on something bigger. If you're fortunate enough to have a big budget, good on you. Let's take a look at some common tent features. First one we're gonna cover is a vestibule. So this is like a space that's outside of the doors. So this is the vestibule for this particular tent. Normally I would stake this out, but I didn't today. But anytime that you're staking out the vestibule, make sure that it is zipped closed, otherwise it can pull weird. But this gives you space for your backpack, your footwear, all kinds of things. Some of these are designed to work like a sunshade and you can sit underneath it, uh, but this gives you a good space if there's inclement weather that you can cook and kind of hang out under here. Although be wary about making your tent smell like food, of course. Some people worry about carbon monoxide poisoning when cooking inside of your vestibule. There's evidence that supports that. There's evidence that it's not an issue. Do what you will, but keep everything vented if that's something that you choose to do. Also keep the flame, of course, away from your tent walls and anything else that's flammable. If you've ever wondered why these doors are floppy like this, it's because you're supposed to stake this out. And then you have in here a vestibule. When you're thinking about doors, how many doors do you want it to have? Do you want it to have one door, two doors? It's nice to have two doors when there are two people. But when it's on the sides, 
versus on the end, that makes a difference. Also with some trekking pole tents, it'll be in front of the door like it is on this one. Whereas on the X mid, it's to the side of the door. So it doesn't get in the way of getting in. Fly first pitch. So if you have the inner of this one separate from the rain fly, this one still sets up with the fly first and then you set up the mesh inner after. And that's nice in inclement weather. Most tents are not gonna have that. Think about things like stash pockets and loops for hanging up clothesline or a light. Having extra guy out points can be really nice for ventilation, storm worthiness, etc. It can also give you a little bit more volume on the inside of your tent. In this case, it can also keep this nylon from sagging as much and then touching the mesh inner if it gets wet. But even now, it's touching, I think, the inner a little bit. <laughs> Taped seams help prevent leaking from the holes that are created by stitching and sewing the tent together. Look at durability and think about things like your skill level, conditions you'll be in, such as rocky terrain or high winds, and whether you'll be taking kids or dogs with you. Most ultralight tents will need to be handled gently and won't stand up to the beating that kids and dogs can dish out. Another thing to look at is the length of the tent. And so, especially for someone who's tall, I'm only 5'4", so this isn't really a big issue for me. But how long that tent is when you're laying down makes a big difference. If you're someone who is very tall and you need a tall tent, the Duplex L, Copper Spur Platinum, and lighthearted gear so long are three different options for very tall people. Ease of setup can be a factor, especially if you're still new to setting up tents, if you'll be exhausted when you get to camp and have to set up, or you just wanna keep it simple. If you're getting some value out of this, be sure to give it a like and hit subscribe. Descriptions like two person, three person, completely arbitrary. In general, you'll wanna go up one more person than you actually have, especially if you're taking a dog or small kids with you, or if you wanna have your gear inside rather than in the vestibule or elsewhere outside. You'll probably want a larger tent if you're spending more time inside that tent or if you're not a small person like I'm not, but remember that a larger tent is also gonna have a larger footprint, meaning it's gonna need more space. And if you're in the back country, it may be hard to find a good solid flat space that's big enough for your tent. Different tents will have different ways of giving you more volume on the inside. For example, this one has these guy out points on the sides to help expand that inner versus this one has hooks that go along the poles on the inner to help expand that volume a bit. But less expensive tents will often have a more sloped inner versus this is a little bit more rounded to give you more volume. But we're gonna cover that in a minute. This is where you wanna look beyond just floor dimensions and interior height. And that interior height is a nice thing to know if you wanna be able to sit up inside of your tent. Let's talk about structure of backpacking tents now. These are both freestanding tents. And what that means is that they will stand all on their own with the poles that come with them. You don't necessarily have to stake them out. Although if you wanna use the vestibules, you'll definitely need to stake them out. And if you don't want them to roll off or go floating away <laughs> in a good wind, you'll also want to stake them out. And you'll even see videos on YouTube of them floating in the air. If there's any possibility of questionable weather, definitely stake them out. I have certainly seen my share of them either on their side or even rolling. And putting stuff inside them is not enough to keep them from rolling or floating around. A semi-freestanding tent is kind of a cross between a freestanding tent and a non-freestanding tent in that for the most part, the structure is freestanding, except in order to really maximize the space, usually the foot box, you'll need to stake it out. With both freestanding and semi-freestanding, you will definitely need the poles that come with it. Then we have non-freestanding tents, like both of these. Most of them will work with trekking poles, although you can buy specific poles for them 
if you want to but they will absolutely require being staked out in order to stand up. Next topic, single walled tents versus double walled tents. In general, a single walled tent is going to be lighter weight. It'll also be less bulky when packed. That said, it's a case by case kind of basis. A double walled tent is gonna have better ventilation. You're gonna have that mesh inner and then a rain fly over that. And since you have that separated layer, then condensation will stick with the rain fly rather than on the mesh inner and it becomes less of a concern. In general, a single walled tent will be easier to set up in the rain, although again, this is a fly first pitch on the X mid, so it's not so much of a factor. But if you have one like my half dome, then that one's gonna be a little harder to set up in the rain. Once you get the rain fly on, you'll basically just wanna have a towel to dry off the floor on the inside. With a single walled tent, it is easier to wipe down the condensation versus with a double walled tent where there is mesh in between. With a rain fly, you also wanna look at how far down it goes. Being closer to the ground like this will make it a little bit difficult for ventilation. However, it'll also give you better protection from the elements. Let's talk a little bit about three season tents versus four season tents. Most tents are gonna be three season tents and they're gonna get you through most wind and rain and even some snow, but they're not designed to bear the heavy loads or the really high winds of the high peaks. When it comes to those heavy snow loads, and those high winds, something like the X-Mid is really designed to be able to shed that very well versus a dome tent like this, where it's actually gonna sit likely on here and collect and weigh down this tent and potentially cave in. On a four season tent, this solid part would go in or go up a lot higher and there would be a zippered window over the, or the zippered cover on the inside of this window. There's also less ventilation and it gets a lot warmer inside, which is great if you're in deep snow, not so much for the other three seasons, but that gives you a lot more protection against those elements. And that includes your snow, your rain, sand, and dirt. Four season tents also tend to be heavier and bulkier and just plain not practical for most backpackers and certainly not for your very first tent. If you're looking at going with a cheaper option for your tent, here are a few things to think about when you're comparing it with a more expensive tent. If it's a double walled, which it most likely is, how far down does the rain fly go? On a lot of these inexpensive tents, they have a very small rain fly that doesn't offer a lot of protection. Additionally, depending on where you're going and how small the insects are, the Noceum mesh is a much finer mesh on a more expensive tent in general than it is on a less expensive tent. For example, you can see the difference on the X-Mid here versus on my Trekker 2, which is a $70 tent, $300. There's a difference. If you're looking at a dome tent, compare the angle of the walls. The angle will be a lot lower on one of these less expensive tents than it would be on a more expensive dome tent in general. Some of those dome tents also come with fiberglass poles rather than aluminum. And those are significantly heavier and much more brittle and more likely to break. The material on less expensive tents is generally a DWR treated polyester uh, with polyurethane as the treatment. And I know that I have seen it peeling off of those tents after a few years of use. There are several options of materials that tents can be made out of. One of them is Dyneema. This is the strongest option on the market. It's lightweight, it's waterproof, but it's also see-through in general. It's loud and very expensive. When it's being sewn, the holes that are created along those seams can pull and enlarge over time, but they can easily be repaired with the proper tape. Most tents you're gonna see on the market are made of sil nylon, which is a silicone coated nylon. It has a silkier feel than polyester. It's more durable, but it also stretches and weakens when it's wet. You can also get leaking along those seams, which means it can sag and touch the inner mesh and get stuff wet. So you'll may need to tighten those guy lines if it's raining. 
You can get leaking along the seams, but a good tent will have taped seams and it will be designed to mitigate this. The material thickness is often measured in denier. Higher denier will be stronger, more robust, but also heavier. So poly, which to my knowledge is pretty much just the X-mid as of filming this, does not stretch or weaken when it's wet, very waterproof, and is also measured in denier. Tents will also be different sizes when they're packed. And it's nice to have the option to put it inside of your pack. It's also okay to put it outside. And especially if it's packed up wet, you'll want it on the outside. A footprint or ground sheet is an optional sheet that can go underneath your tent. It should not stick out like this one. Unfortunately, my tent had been discontinued when I went to get this footprint for it. Please ignore the footprint that's clearly not for this tent. Some people make them out of Tyvek or Polycro. Here's a little bonus tip for you. If you ever wondered what this little extra segment is, if it comes with your poles, this is a brace. So let's say that you had a break in the middle of one of these poles. You slide it on where that break is or even over the joint wherever that break is. And that'll get you through until you get home and support that pole there. If you're just starting out, this is not where I would spend the most money. There are a lot of good budget options out there and you can upgrade as you know better what you like and when you're ready to save some weight going that way. But I would really make sure that you're warm enough when you're on, on the trail and that you're able to sleep comfortably. And so getting a good sleeping bag or quilt and a good sleeping pad are really critical for that. I have some videos right here to explain what to look for when you're shopping for those. Thank you so much for watching. I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.